Hi, welcome to the mystical City of God, presenting the previously untold history of the Mother of God, from her immaculate inception in God's eternal mind to her glorious coronation by the triune God in heaven. The Venerable Mary of Agreda's four-volume history, some 2,700 pages, bears the name the mystical City of God, the name given to God's mother as it was drawn from chapter 21 of the Apocalypse by the Queen's spiritual daughter, Mary of Agreda. Last week, we delved into how the Queen of the Apostles aided in penning the Apostles' Creed and her prayerful assistance in sending forth the 12 Apostles to evangelize what was then the known world. Staying with Mary's role in assisting the infant church this week, we look at how Mary, mother of the church, appeared not once but twice in Spain to save her devotee, St. James the Greater, from certain death. If you're a premium member, you'll get the full account of what the Blessed Mother did for this apostle and how she paved the way for future apparitions, particularly among the Spanish people. These extended versions are a way of thanking you for your financial support in producing spiritual content. So thank you very much. And if you happen to be watching the shorter version for free on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button and consider becoming a premium member for just $10 a month. With us, Church Milton's managing editor, the one, the only, Rodney Pelletier. <laughs> so, Rodney, last week we were going into, uh, you know, the partitioning of the, of the apostles, sending them all out, how the Blessed Mother was uh, a key in that and spirit, spiritual uh, assistance there. But what really hit me was Peter's role, the prominent role. I mean, he's illuminated at the council and the Holy Spirit's thundering, say, listen to St. Peter. And after he spoke, the th you know, the Shekinah is coming down and all that. Really amazing at that. Uh... Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It really served to reinforce uh, God's authority through his vicar, the Pope, and all the subsequent popes afterwards. I can really see how all the popes, you know, would be defending this. Like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's straight stuff right there. <laughs> listen to the Pope. Now, before we get into we're going to talk about the Blessed Mother and she's carried on the clouds and all this by angels and all this type of stuff. I can see a lot of people out there like, dude, man, I never heard any of that. Okay, mm -hmm. This doesn't even exist, right? I don't believe it. Some sort, well, Or maybe a pious, uh, pious, pious you know, whatever. If you yeah. want to think about it. <laughs> All that angels carrying people around stuff. Okay, let's look to Daniel 14. This is just one instance in the Bible. Daniel 14, uh, chapter 14, 32. It has nothing to do with necessarily about the, the show here, but I just want to set, lay the groundwork. And it talks about the prophet called Habakkuk. And the, this is when Daniel's in the lion's den. Doesn't have anything to eat all week. And the angel of the Lord said to Habakkuk, Carry the dinner, because he was making some pottage and some other, whatever they, he was making there at the time, they said. Carry the dinner which thou hast into Babylon, which is Iraq, from Jerusalem, to Daniel, who was in the lion's den. And Habakkuk said, Lord, I have never saw Babylon, nor do I know the den. Okay, <laughs> you got the wrong guy here. And the angel of the Lord took him by the top of his head and carried him by the hair of his head and set him in Babylon. Habakkuk said, Daniel, take the dinner and that God has sent thee. And the angel of the Lord presently set Habakkuk again in his own place. You know, I don't know what altitude they were traveling at or how fast they were going, but that's a pretty, uh, you know, what type of a, a view he had over the land right there. But uh, he found out where Babylon was and where mm -hmm. the den was. Yeah, he, yeah, the angel taught him. Yeah. It's, it's funny because uh, I think you... You mentioned this in the previous show too and it's not god he uh he prepares the what well, he makes worthy the unworthy so that's kind of what he did with the prophet he doesn't qualify call the qualified that's he qualifies those he calls there we go he right gets them yeah. up to speed as he needs them yeah 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 and uh so, and, and habakkuk here he's like i don't even know the way and he picked him up and we're going to find out that that's mm -hmm. exactly the same thing going on mm -hmm. uh in the uh in the new testament uh we're going to be talking about saint james the greater as he goes to spain and saragossa and granada everybody knows about saragossa the mm -hmm. oldest apparition of the church publicly proved venerated since time immemorial google it you know look it up in church history it's all there saragossa our lady the pillar it happened it, spanish people say it happened the catholic church says it happened it's been venerated from time immemorial and all of that that's one of the places that she brings up that the blessed mother appeared but then also uh, Granada, which is something that most people don't know. And she said that's really not very well known, but this is what happened in Granada. Um, Jer uh, James, uh, we talked about the partitioning last week. He's going to be the first one to leave Jerusalem, going out to Spain. And he'll be the first one to come back to be martyred mm. in Jerusalem. And that was actually foretold by St. Peter mm. at the Council of Jerusalem. We talked about that last week where... 
he said, and you will end your days being martyred in Jerusalem. Right. So everybody knows that stuff. I mean, it's like, boom, it's going to happen. We're talking about volume four in, called the coronation. We're at chapter 16. Now, this is paragraph 19. I just want to, setting the stage here, James is going to be going to Spain. But just listen to all the information in a few short sentences here, all the information that's dropped. Paragraph 13, 319. Venerable Mary of Agreda is just narrating here. No one's appearing to her. No one's telling her all this. She's just, she's just narrating this. She uh, says of St. James, he embarked at Joppa, which is now called Jaffa. In, I think, Haifa now in the mm. modern, but in 1600s, it was Jaffa. In the year 35, in the month of August, so 35 would be 35 years after our Lord was born, in the month of August, called Sextilis. And I'm like, Sextilis? I haven't heard that before. That'll be a little note there for me to fact check. Look up. One year and five months after the Passion of the Lord. So it's 35 years after he was born. One, month, uh, one year and five months after he died. Eight months after the martyrdom of St. Stephen. So St. Stephen... Uh, if you take one year and five months and, and, and knock off eight months, you'll get the, how long it was Stephen after our Lord died, that he died. And five months before the conversion of St. Paul. So we know St. Paul happened after St. Stephen. Mm -hmm. So uh, next week we'd like to work out some of these numbers for you and do some of the dates. Um, that'll be the last, uh, the leg of, 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 our, of our show here, the last three, the three, three weeks of it. But a note here, just in fact checking one little fact. Sextilis. Well, it comes to find out, if you Google this, like I did, because uh, I wasn't taught this in school. I don't think she was either. Um, in the 8th century, 8th BC, it began to be called uh, uh, August because of the Caesar Augustus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Prior to that, it was called Sextilis. Mm. Why? Because Sextilis is the sixth month of the year. You're like, wait a minute, from January to August isn't. I know, but in that numbering system, they started March hmm. as the first wow. month of the year, hmm. which matches what Mary Vergretta says elsewhere, where March was the creation of the world. Okay. The world was created in March. So the not, ancients all pretty much held that March was the first yeah. month. Ah. I don't know how they knew that, but they knew that. <laughs> but anyway, that's what Mary Vergretta would say. March was the first month of the year. And they all said, if you Google it, what sextilis mean? Uh, S E X. T I L I S. Yeah, that was the month for August, mm. the sixth month of the year, starting from March. That type of information just flows all the way through here. It's like nobody knows that. Mm. Especially mm. some little uneducated nun in a convent in yeah. Spain, yeah. you know, that never went to higher universities or anything, didn't have Google and didn't have a whole bunch of encyclopedias just stacking the walls around there. So, anyway, moving on. Granada, she said, was the first of two uh, apparitions or appearances of Blessed Mother. These weren't a, a, apparitions like uh, spiritual, like I'm um, just, you know, a ghost appearing mm -hmm. to you. And they weren't by location. Uh, and they weren't coming from Ephesus. Right. They were, she was still in Jerusalem mm -hmm. uh, on the first one, very much so uh, Granada came first. And that's when St. James was about to be martyred. Mm. And... She uh, actually was carried there uh, by the angels. And that's why we brought up Habakkuk here mm -hmm. to say, yeah, that stuff happens in the Bible. <laughs> angels can do that type of thing, you know. Um, the second one was very close down to the wire. She was only four days because there's a big, um, a big um, persecution stirred right. up in Jerusalem by that time. And there was, she was only four days away from an uh, uh, embarking on the ship with St. John to Ephesus to get out of town from mm -hmm. Jerusalem. And at that time, they, um, before she left, though, that's when Saragossa, she went to see St. James in Saragossa. Right. Both times he was having a hard time converting anybody, just like Guadalupe when right. the 1531. The Franciscans had converted in 10 years, like maybe 5,000 people. Right. And after Our Lady Guadalupe appeared, Spanish, Mexico, mm -hmm. see the connection. Mm -hmm. um, Something like six million people converted yeah. in like yeah. just a few years. Yeah. So uh, let's let's go on with the narration here. Um, James took twelve disciples mm -hmm. in imitation of our Lord. This is paragraph three twenty three now in Mystical City of God. Uh, and the Jews were all bad in these guys. The Jews proclaimed him, St. James, as an adventurer, deceiver, the author of false sects, and an enchanter. 
they stirred up the heathen people mm -hmm. against them and all this. They, they actually then seized them all, led them forth bound and fettered beyond the city walls of Granada, which is in the southern part of Spain, uh, and there likewise chained their feet, for they considered them to be magicians and sorcerers mm. who might otherwise escape, as their enemies made preparation to decapitate them all immediately. The holy apostles did not cease uh, praying to God and calling upon the Blessed Mother. So then, the uh, paragraph 324, this is, this is really boss. 324, from her oratory in the cynical, and that's where she was, this upper room mm -hmm. where the Council of Jerusalem had been, where they had the Last Supper and all this, that was her oratory. She had a room there. From her oratory in the cynical where she was, fa she was favored with an especially clear vision, the great queen heard, and, uh, heard all and saw what was passing with her most beloved apostle, St. James. If she hears and sees that as she's still at, you know, and in real time in the body while she was living, how much more so in heaven? Does yeah. she see her and hear all of our problems as they're folding out and how we need to call upon her? Uh, her son, this is where the Habakkuk event takes place, paragraph 325, her son immediately commanded the thousand angels of her guard. And if you go back in the first volume, she had been given a thousand angels to guard and assist her and all that. They all manifested themselves to her in human shape, told her what the Most High had commanded. Without delay, they placed her upon a throne, made a beautiful cloud of a beautiful cloud, and carried her to the field in Spain, where St. James and his companions were awaiting martyrdom in their fetters. They were all chained, hand and feet. Their enemies had already bared their scimitars or swords to strike off their heads. The Apostle James alone saw the Queen of Heaven mm. in the clouds from which she spoke to him in most endearing terms, saying, James, my son and dearest friend of my Lord, Jesus, be of good heart and blessed eternally be him who called and brought thee to uh, the divine light. Rise then, faithful servant of the Most High, and be free of the bonds. And while that words, the powerful Queen, the fetters of the uh, his disciples instantly fell. Think back when uh, Peter and was it James were in the uh, winter in fetters and chains, and an angel, you know, bumped them in the in, in the uh, cell in Jerusalem when they, they were in prison there, and the chains immediately fell from right. there from right. their feet. So that that type of thing, the, the angels came there and immediately they were unchained. Hmm. Uh, the Jews who stood with drawn weapons all fell to the earth where they remained for some hours deprived of their senses. Think back to the Garden of G uh, Gethsemane mm -hmm. when right. Jesus said, you know, I am he. Right. And they all fell back. And Mary of Agreda would say they, they laid motionless for some like 10, 15, 20 minutes or half hour or something. They were out for a while. Right. The demons who had accompanied them and stirred them on were all uh, hurled profound to the profound abysses. So they were all cast into hell, their power being broken there. Hmm. And the chains were gone, so thus leaving James and his disciples at liberty. They're like, oh, we're free right now. <laughs> now it says his disciples did not see the queen or hear angels, but understood that the miracle, uh, that the miracle had taken place and were informed uh, by the apostle of the particulars. So that's what happened at Granada. Wow. Yeah, it's just like, okay. <laughs> it's amazing. But we have in the Acts of the Apostles where Peter and Paul also was in prison at one time. The angel comes in, taps them, and boom, they're, they're freed. You know, the angel freedom. And we just read through that. And here we get it. And it's like, wow, this is really amazing. Well, it's the same thing was happening in the Bible elsewhere. You know, we talked about a Philip, you know, in the Acts uh, about chapter 8. Right. Angel says, hey, go down this way. And, you know, you can meet with this eunuch and talk to him and all that. Yeah, the, the angels, were they, they fulfilled their role of messenger in the early church, as they still do today. But uh, more, I suppose, in more of an open fashion. And if they have to they carry someone them. around, they can carry him around. Yep. So from Granada, she ordered him, James, to continue his journeys, commanding hundreds of her guardian angels to accompany him and show him the way from one place to another. Kind of like Habakkuk had to be carried over to Babylon because he didn't know the way. To defend him and his disciples from all dangers and finally after having traversed all the provinces of Spain to be, bring him to Saragossa, mm -hmm. which is where we're going to uh, end up uh, in the next portion of the show if you happen to be a uh, premium member. So that's it for our shorter free version. So uh, for non-premium members, we'll see you next week when we talk about all these dates of key events and the ages of particular people. We've got a lot of math to do this week. Hopefully we can get it all done for next week. Uh, all is given by Venerable Mary of Regretta. And uh, you'll find out just how many years it's been since Christ was actually born and what's called Anno Domini. And uh, one hint, it was more than 2,000 
24 years ago since Christ was born. Until then, God bless you.